Do you want to know what really baffles me? ChatGPT went super viral. I mean, even my professors in the mainstream news are talking about it. So that's how you know, really everyone knows about it. And people won't stop talking about it. It is true, guys, that ChatGPT is really good and really useful and really powerful. However, what irks me is that people are treating ChatGPT like it's something that is completely brand new, never seen before, in some cases, yeah, it kind of is, but we've had this technology for longer than you'd think. And what might come as more of a surprise to a lot of you is the fact that we actually have a better version of ChatGPT, so to speak, that's already produced by OpenAI. Because in reality, ChatGPT was really just like a little tech demo. It was not intended to go as viral as it did. It was literally just to show off the capabilities you can do with a chatbot with the technology we pretty much already had. ChatGPT is based off of GPT-3, which is a large language model developed by OpenAI that we've had for quite some time. Not only that, guys, there's a version of GPT that is all based around code. It's called Codex, and that's actually been around for longer than ChatGPT has. You could think of Codex like ChatGPT is to GPT-3. So there's a lot more to OpenAI's language models than first meets the eye. And plus, there are other language models that aren't just GPT-3 that are actually quite good and are chat-based. And we'll talk about two of those other alternatives today, along with these other OpenAI language models that people have missed out on. I keep seeing these Twitter threads, or in this case, a link to an article. It's like 10 ways you can utilize ChatGPT for blah blah blah, or for this or for that. When a lot of times, the things that people list in these articles and threads are actually things that might be done better by just base GPT, or probably in this case, Codex. So viewers, what we're looking at right here is OpenAI's Playground. If you've only used ChatGPT, you won't even know that this exists. However, I have talked about this a number of times on my channel in the past. You can think about this as a more advanced version of ChatGPT, and it's not based as a chat bot. This is just a large language model that you can directly interact with. As you can see, they do actually have a bunch of presets that you can start with to play around, and one of them actually, funny enough, is chat. So you guys can imagine that ChatGPT under the hood actually works a lot like this, where it says the following is a conversation with an AI assistant. The assistant is helpful, creative, clever, and very friendly. You see, the way that the AI actually reads this sentence is that it's just trying to continue whatever text already exists. So it'll read this and it'll go, oh, the context is that this is a conversation with an AI assistant. And I can see that the, there's a human input and an AI input here. So, for example, normally in this scenario, right, you would be the human and you would start typing and asking the AI something as the human. And then you would click the generate button and it would generate an AI generated response. But the curious thing here is that the AI is actually able to generate human responses too. Because, under the hood, really, it's a large language model, it can do both. It's just going to try to continue whatever text is available. So I can go ahead and click the submit button here, and as you can see, it produced response for the human and the AI. It's just trying to complete text. With the knowledge of this information that this GPT AI can just basically complete to any text that you put in here, it really opens up possibilities. An example of possibilities that are very possible in OpenAI's GPT-3 Playground that just simply aren't possible in ChatGPT are stuff like this. The following is a list of new swear words that have never existed before. And once I click submit here, OpenAI's Playground GPT-3 is able to just give us a nice list of a bunch of random new swear words that have never existed and what they mean which is very impressive. However, if you go in here in ChatGPT, as you can see, I tried the same prompt. Write me a list of new swear words that have never existed before. I'm sorry, but I'm not able to generate an appropriate or offensive content. So, you know, you can see how people are trying to just work around these limitations to get this language model to give it what they want, when in reality, all they have to do is go over to OpenAI's Playground. This is what ChatGPT is based off of, is this Playground models. I mean, you can actually talk to it like you talk to ChatGPT too. This is a prompt that you could straight up just give ChatGPT. Write me a list of catchy YouTube video titles for digging a hole through the earth. And as you can see, it completely gives us a very reasonable list as ChatGPT also would. 
OpenAI's Playground does not have the same limitations as ChatGPT. It will avoid using swears, but it won't directly deny you access. For example, if I wanted to create a rap that included swears, generally if I just tell it to write a rap that has swears in it, it's not going to do it. However, if I give it a word bank with some swears that are already written down, it will be more than happy to include them. Let's take a look at the interface that OpenAI's Playground has. We've already discussed the presets. These are just a bunch of presets that you can pick from that automatically apply into the playground and adjust all these various settings for the best conditions for whatever the preset is. Another cool thing here is you can actually save and create your own presets for anything that you can imagine. So if you need to come back to something later, you can actually save your own preset, which is cool. This is very similar to the saving of a conversation in ChatGPT. You can actually share the playground state as well, which is cool. And you can actually change your content filter preferences, which is really nice. A lot of people complain about the content filtering with ChatGPT, but playground really is where it's at, guys, because you can simply just turn the warning off. Moving down into the different settings here on the side, this is where you're going to get into a lot of the fine tuning and tweaking that you can actually do. This is another big plus over ChatGPT, which has no settings at all. If you really want to get deep into this stuff and really use it, this is where you should go. As you can see, we have three different modes we can choose from. These two are in beta, but they work decently. Complete just tries to complete whatever text you put in there, as we've been seeing. Then we have insert, and the way that insert works is it will try to complete text that's in the middle of a sentence, for example. Here's an example I've come up with. Hello and welcome to insert in brackets. My goodness, that is one sad looking fish. Two completely uh, separate ideas here, and what GPT is going to do here, GPT-3, that's what we would call this, is going to try to fill in this text where the insert is. And as you can see, the insert function actually worked pretty fun in this scenario at least. Hello and welcome to the forum. I am sorry, I can't help you with your fish, but I'd like to suggest that you get some pictures of your fish and post them here. We may be able to help you more if we can see what is going on. Good luck! Oh my goodness, that is one sad looking fish. So what it was able to do here was able to interpret my two completely separate ideas and hallucinate uh, a scenario that the text might actually interact in. So it came up with, oh, this is a forum and this person is trying to post their, their sad hurt fish or something like that. So you can sort of see the capabilities here. Very fascinating. And we've also got the edit function, which is a complete editing and instruction set for your prompt, which is an interesting way of doing things. So for example, with this one, your input would have some sort of thing that you want edited, and then in the instructions, you put what you want edited. My input here is all screwed up text, right? And then the instructions here say fix the grammar, and I just click submit. And in this case, it didn't help at all. But with the correct set of instructions, it will in fact work. I just changed it to rewrite the sentence with completely accurate grammar and it completely rewrote it with accurate grammar. Absolutely fantastic. Technically, ChatGPT can do this stuff as well. However, it's a lot easier to just do it in Playground. Because remember, ChatGPT is kind of just designed as a tech demo. Next up, we have the model, and this is where you get to actually pick through the different text models. There's a lot to pick from here. There's Text DaVinci 003, and this is sort of the most well-rounded, best model at everything. It does a lot of stuff really well. It's very powerful. This is the best GPT-3 model. Then they have Curie, which is faster and lower cost, but still very capable. They have Babbage, very straightforward, very fast, low cost. And then they have Ada, very simple tasks it can do, but it's also the fastest model and the cheapest. And they also give you access to some of the older models in here, which are honestly pretty useless in general, I would say, for doing any actual useful work or anything like that. However, these old models are super fun to play around with. Like, if we just go to the original DaVinci model here, we're on DaVinci 003, this is the first DaVinci, and I just type, my goodness guys, check out this pufferfish, and then click submit, you'll see DaVinci sort of just goes off and it has no bars held back. It will say the most heinous things that you have ever seen because it's sort of the first Da Vinci model. My goodness, guys, check out this puffer fish in real life, and then they would go and they would take it back to the lab and then they would look at their feces, their poop, and they would say, oh my gosh, they're eating this, oh my goodness. So that's why it's called the puffer fish. 
and yeah, it, it gets a lot worse than that. So it's not a great model, but it can be really silly and really fun to mess around with. In comparison here, our brand new DaVinci 003 model would just say, wow, that puffer fish is so cool. I've never seen that one before. So it's a lot more, you know, to cut out and thinned out. And guys, we also have the Codex models in here, which are completely designed to only deal with code. They can help fix code. They can do pretty much all of the coding things. I guarantee that Codex, Code DaVinci 002 in this case for the specific model, has all of the same capabilities that ChatGPT does in terms of coding, but probably more capabilities as well. It's probably better because this is a model fine-tuned to do code. I won't really give you guys an example of this one specifically, but it definitely can create working code and it probably does it better than ChatGPT. So moving down through the list, we also have the temperature aspect of this, which is a dial you can turn. This controls how random the model is. Lowering the temperature will actually generate in more deterministic and repetitive answers. But the more you raise up the temperature, you're going to have more strange and random ideas thrown at you, which is pretty fun to mess around with. This maximum length here is how many tokens the AI is allowed to generate whenever you click this submit button down here. So if I turn this up to a thousand, it's allowed to generate up to a thousand tokens as a response. But keep in mind, guys, that the maximum amount of tokens that you can actually have in your prompt is 4000, which is pretty long. Honestly, it's best to just sort of keep this around 250. They also have these stop sequences. This is a little bit more advanced. You can do up to four of these, and whenever the AI hits one of these stop sequences, it will stop generating. They also have the top P, and I usually just leave this at one. It controls the diversity of the text, and 0.5 means that half of all likelihood weighted options are considered. Honestly, just leave this one at one. I never mess with this option. They've also got the frequency penalty and the presence penalty. Frequency is how much new tokens are penalized based off of whether they already exist in the text so far. And if you increase this dial here, it really will reduce the model's likelihood to repeat the same line verbatim. But if that's something that you want, then you might want to leave this closer to zero. Presence is pretty similar. It basically penalizes new tokens based on whether they appear in the text at all. So this will increase the model's likelihood to switch topics and talk about something else. But I would leave this at zero if you really don't know how to mess with that and don't know what you're looking for exactly. Now this best of right down here is a very powerful option. Essentially by increasing this best of slider, it will generate multiple completions server side and display only the best of those completions. When you have it set to one, that's the base. That's as cheap as it gets. This will increase the cost of your generations by a lot, but it also increases the quality by a decent amount. So when you get really stuck on something, um, you can increase this best of and it will cost a lot, but you'll get something really good. They also have these inject start and restart text. This really applies when you're doing something like a chat bot. Like if I go to the basic chat preset here, as you can see, we do have the stop sequences. So it stops at human and AI and doesn't just keep generating stuff. But it also has the injections at the start of AI and human. And they also have this final option here, which is just sort of like a highlighting option. It indicates how likely a token was to be generated, which is, I mean, it's pretty fun to have on. We've also got a show history button here, a regenerate button, and of course your basic submit button. So yeah, that's sort of the basics around what I think a lot of people should be using instead of just using ChatGPT. You can clearly see there's a lot more fine tunability and a lot more options to just the basic playground GPT-3. You can really use this for a lot more and I think get better results out of what you would get from ChatGPT instead of trying to find jailbreaks for it. You could just use this. Not only that, there's also the coding model. I will say though, currently, ChatGPT is completely free. It doesn't cost you a dime, although I believe it will in the future. Now keep in mind, this isn't free. GPT-3 Playground costs money. However, when you sign up for an OpenAI account, you get $18 worth of credits for free, which is quite a lot for GPT-3. You can go through quite a lot of prompts. And it's actually really, really cheap. The most powerful model here, DaVinci, is two cents for every a thousand tokens. But what's crazy is Curie here is 10 times cheaper. And then this one is even more cheap. 
and then Ada is also cheaper than that. So there is a lot of cheaper options here. If you're just doing simpler tasks than what you need from Da Vinci, you can actually get away with paying for a lot less. And a thousand tokens again is quite a lot. So, you know, I actually use GPT-3 quite a lot. I use it for a decent amount of things and I don't pay more than a few bucks a month for it. You basically just start for free, pay as you go, and then you can also choose the model. So, I mean, especially for people trying to, you know, get rich by using chat GPT or these language models to do different tasks. This is definitely worth your investment because you have a lot more controllability over things. And to make this whole situation even crazier, there are very, very fantastic AI models that are chat based that you can use. The first one we'll talk about here very briefly, character.ai. I did a video on this and it blew me away the first time I did it and every time I use it after it still blows me away. It's very, very fantastic chat bots. And these are not just, you know, some random AI chat bot you're talking to. You can talk to any number of hundreds and thousands of different characters and they are very accurate and very good. You'd be shocked the kind of discussions you might have with Socrates, for example. They're very philosophical, it's very smart, and it understands quite a lot. In fact, the inventor of the transformer model is one of the founders of this company so yeah that's a pretty important little thing he knows what he's doing so i highly recommend you check out character.ai it is free as well to use too and it's very very slept on i also recommend that you guys check out inworld ai which has more than just the character capability to it. Like these characters can actually be imported into video games. I just did a video about this one. It's very awesome, but yeah, they have the same sort of deal where you can chat with a lot of different characters. And this one's also cool because you can actually link your microphone up to it and just directly talk to them as if they're people. It's really fascinating stuff. In general, I think a lot of people that have hopped onto the chat GPT fad, we'll call it, are actually missing out on the full capabilities of these language models and have not even come close to scratching the surface of what they are able to offer. So yeah, I'm presenting these solutions to you guys and please let me know what you guys generate with them. If you generate anything cool, please make sure you hop into my Discord server which is linked down below and share it with me. I would love to see it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.